Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. This is video lecture for linear algebra, section 2.3 on the inverse of a matrix. So before we talk about finding the inverse of a matrix, let's think about some inverses that we are very comfortable finding already. And I want you to just think back to when you're solving a basic equation, something like 5x equals 9. And if I were to ask you to solve or find x, Pretty easily, most of you just in your head could figure out that x is equal to 9 fifths. But what I want you guys to do is break down right now and think about what exactly happened. How did we get that? How did we do it? Well, we applied the inverse operation of multiplication to both sides of the equation here. Notice to isolate x or to get it by itself, we have to undo the operation on the left-hand side, namely multiplication by 5. So how did we undo that? Well, we utilized the inverse of multiplication, which is division, but I want you to think of it a little differently in this context. We multiplied both sides by one fifth, yes, same as dividing by five, and essentially one fifth can be rewritten as five to the negative first power, right? So we have one fifth, five to the negative first times five x, equals 5 to the negative first times 9. We applied that to both sides of the equation. This 5 to the negative first, or 1 fifth, is the inverse of 5 under the operation of multiplication. And then that leads us here to our solution that x is equal to 9 fifths. So we're going to apply the same idea. You'll have a matrix and we're going to talk about matrix A, which is an n by n matrix. We say that it's invertible or non-singular when there exists an n by n matrix B such that the product AB is equal to BA, which is equal to the identity matrix of size n by n as well, order n. Now, the matrix B is the multiplicative inverse of A. And we say that a matrix that does not have an inverse is non-invertible or singular. And please, as a note of caution, only square matrices have inverses. Okay, do not try to find the inverse of a non-square matrix. Okay, so first let's talk about a very important theorem, 2.7, which discusses the uniqueness of an inverse matrix. And the theorem states the following. It says, if A is an invertible matrix, then its inverse is unique. And the inverse of A is denoted by the following notation. So that's how we write A inverse, A raised to the negative first power. So as a note, I want you guys to keep in mind because this is the multiplicative inverse of A. So when we talk about A inverse for a matrix, it's equal to one over A. Okay, that, but how do you compute it? No, it's not just like you take the reciprocal of all the entries. No, 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 it's much more involved than that. We'll get into that later. But first, let's prove this theorem here regarding the uniqueness of an inverse matrix. And for many of you, this is probably the first time you're exposed to proofs. So here's just a general piece of advice that you can apply across many of your math courses. So if you're trying to show, okay, that there is, exactly one of something. So there is exactly one or a unique something. Then what you do is you assume that there are two distinct, whatever you're trying to find. So in this case, inverses, right? or in other scenarios, maybe you would say there's two distinct solutions, whatever, whatever's applicable. And then what you do after you make that assumption is you show this is false. So you're gonna run into some sort of contradiction. So this is proof by contradiction. And you essentially use this proof technique in a lot of situations, but it's very useful when you're trying to show uniqueness, okay? So if you try to show there's exactly one of something, in this case, I'm gonna show that there's only one inverse for matrix A, you assume that that's not true, you assume that there's two, and then you show why you run into a problem, okay? So here we go, are you ready? Yes. I will say, let B 
and C be two different inverses of A. Okay, so I'm assuming that there's two different inverses. What does that mean? Well, let's think back about our definition. That would mean that A times B is equal to B times A, which is equal to that identity matrix. And also, A times C is equal to C times A, which is also the identity matrix. Okay, now what I'm going to do is say that if I'm assuming A times B equals the identity matrix, then it must be true if I multiply both sides by matrix C as well. So if I take C times AB, that would give me C times the identity matrix. Remember, we have an associative property, so I could write this as CA times matrix B is equal to C times I, identity matrix. And then pay attention right here. C times A, since C is an inverse of A, is equal to I, the identity matrix. So I'm going to replace this product C times A with I. So I have I times B on the left is equal to C times I. And since I is the identity matrix, I times B is matrix B. C times I is also matrix C. So what did we just show? That matrix B is equal to matrix C, that they're actually not two different inverses of A, but they are the exact same matrix. So what does that tell me? That the inverse is unique. Nice? Okay, you just gotta practice. Do it again on your own without watching the video, you know? Then you'll know if you really can handle it. Okay, so how do we find this inverse once we know it exists? So we let A be some square matrix of order N, and then you write the N by 2N matrix that consists of A on the left, and then the N by N identity matrix on the right to obtain a large matrix that looks like this. So you put A on the left, draw a line, identity matrix on the right. This process is called adjoining matrix I to matrix A. And then if possible, you're gonna reduce A to the identity matrix using elementary row operations on the entire matrix. And then if you're successful in the end in transforming A to the identity matrix, then on the right side, you'll have A inverse. If for some reason it's not possible to transform A into the identity matrix, then it means that A is non-invertible or it's singular. And then just to be safe, you can check your work and multiply what you found to be the inverse. So you would take A times A inverse, make sure you get the identity matrix, and then check the product switching the order because remember, matrix multiplication is not commutative, so you want to confirm that everything checks out, okay? So I have a couple examples for you. We'll learn another way to find the inverse of a two by two matrix later, but this process is by using Gauss-Jordan elimination and it works for any square matrix, okay, any order. So here we go, find the inverse of the matrix if it exists. So we have a two by two matrix here, I'm gonna call this matrix A, all right? So what you do is you start off by adjoining matrix A with the identity matrix of order two, with I2. So you're gonna write this nice jumbo matrix. Okay, we've got negative one, one, three, negative three, and then you put the identity matrix of order two, one, zero, zero, one, okay? Now, don't really pay attention to the identity matrix here. Your goal, you're just gonna focus on transforming matrix A into the identity matrix, okay? So you wanna fully diagonalize it. Okay, go. it's the same process, you know, Gauss-Jordan elimination. First thing you wanna do is create your pivot, make this negative one a one. Easiest way to do that, you would just take negative one, multiply by the current row one, and that'll be our new row one. However, you have to apply that row operation to everybody in row one this whole thing right here, okay? So our new row one will be one, negative one, 
negative one, zero, and then row two stays the same. So row two is still three, negative three, zero, one. Okay, next step, remember we make a zero in the bottom left using the pivot, using this positive one up here, okay? So how should we do it? Well, we would take negative three times row one plus row two, and that's our new row two. So let's see here. Row one is not changing. Let me rewrite it. One, negative one, negative one, zero. And then let's think about what row two will be, okay? Negative three row one plus row two, well, that's zero. Negative three times negative one is three plus negative three, zero. This will be positive three and this is one. Okay, oops, not there, here, 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 here. All right, good. So we've got a one, we've got a zero. Next, I turn my attention to the following column. I need to make this zero right here a one, but there's no way to do it. The only way to create your pivot, if you don't currently have a one, is you would multiply or divide by the appropriate constant. And if there's a zero, we're stuck because there's no way to make that a one. You can't multiply or divide by anything to make it into a pivot. So there is no way to make the zero in entry A22 into a one. So what does that mean for us? No inverse exists. This matrix is not invertible. And to keep practicing vocab, that means A is singular. Okay, all that means is non-invertible. Okay, I know it feels a little unsatisfactory when you can't find the inverse. So I've got another example for you where we will be successful, okay? I already spilled the beans. We'll find an inverse. But ooh, look how spicy, it's a three by three. So we're gonna call this matrix A, all right? And so to start off, you adjoin matrix A with the identity matrix this time of order three. All right, so first let's just rewrite everything. Matrix A, one, two, two, three, seven, nine, negative one, negative four, negative seven. And then on the other side, we have one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Beautiful. Okay, so far things are looking good. I already have my pivot here, top left. So now I need to make zeros beneath it in that column. So hopefully you guys are professional now at all these row operations. Using the pivot, I would take negative three times row one plus row two, that's my new row two. And just adding row one and row three will do the job. Give me a zero in that third row. Okay, so let's write out our new matrix. Row one doesn't change, so I'm just gonna rewrite one, two, two, one, zero, zero, and then put a separation right there. My new row two, let's see. So this is zero, negative three times two, that's negative six plus seven is one, and then negative six plus nine is three, negative three plus zero, negative three, this won't change, this won't change. And then my new row three, I just take row one plus row three, so zero, negative two, negative five, one, zero, one. Okay, very good. Painless so far. Now check column two, where's my pivot? Oh, already ready to go. This matrix was from the heavens. I mean, who, who wrote such a nice one for us? Okay, I'm gonna use that pivot now to zero out the entries in column two above and below it. So let's think, what would we need to do? I would take a negative two times row two plus row one, that's my new row one. And then similarly, positive two times row two plus row three, that's my new row three. So row two is not changing, yes? 
let's rewrite it. So 0, 1, 3, negative 3, 1, 0. That's my row th 2, 2, 2, 2. And then my new row 1 will be, this 1 stays the same. Now I have a 0 here. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Um, positive 6 plus 1 is 7. Uh, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 2. And this stays 0. And then let's check row 3. So we'd have negative 6 plus 1. That's negative 5. Oh, why did I jump around? Hold on, let me, let me stay accountable. <laughs> 0, 0. This will be a positive 1. And then negative 5. Let's see. 2 plus 0, that's 2. And then this is a 1. Okay. Things are looking great. Remember, I'm just focusing here on trying to make this the identity matrix. I'm not really paying attention or stressing about what this looks like. Once this is the identity matrix, then the result here will be the inverse. Okay, if I'm able to successfully complete this project. Okay, so let's move our attention now. Here's our pivot ready to go. So all I have to do is make the rest of the entries in column three zeros. Let's see, using the pivot, what would we do? Four times row three plus row one is my new row one. And then negative three times row three plus row two is my new row two. Why don't you guys pause the video, make sure you could do this part successfully, and then check back in. Okay, so let's go over our work together. Row three didn't change, so I like to write it first. Zero, zero, one, negative five, two, one. That's the same. And then our new row one and row two, make sure you got the same thing. So one, zero, zero. This should be negative 13, six, four. 0, 1, 0, 12, negative 5, negative 3. How'd you do? Good. If you made a mistake, go back, see what caused you to make that mistake. Did you forget a negative? Did you add something incorrectly? It's fine. Use that as a learning opportunity for yourself so you're aware and you can be proactive in the future and remind yourself not to make that sort of a silly error. So now at long last, we have identity matrix order three on the left and da, 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 A inverse is on the right. So let's rewrite A inverse nicely now that we've found it. A inverse is, it's exciting, negative 13, 6, 4, 12, negative 5, negative 3, negative 5, 2, 1. Okay, and then if you wanted to confirm that you found the inverse correctly, you would just go ahead and verify using matrix multiplication, which I'm not going to do. I'll let you make sure you can still multiply matrices in your own time. So to check, you would take A times A inverse. Make sure you get identity matrix of order 3. And you need to check the product in the other order. A inverse times A. Make sure it's the identity matrix of order 3. Okay? Good. So that concludes part one. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and click that notification bell. That way you don't miss out that when I upload part two and probably part three, you'll know right away so you can hop straight to my channel. I've got lots of other great content coming your way soon. So thanks for your support and I'll see you guys later.